Bing. Evening. Hi there, Sam. Going fishing. Want to come along? There's a low-pressure area just off Vancouver here. Now, keep your eye on it. Let me know which direction it moves in. Sam, what happens when you leave here at night? They got a spot for you in the hangar, give you a regular check. Oh, they couldn't spare the time any more than I can. Well, I hear it's going to pay off for you next week. That's your idea of a payoff. What are you talking about? Oh, now, come on, Sam. Stillman's moving up to top exec, and you move into Stillman's spot, and you're the last to know, huh? Try that on Sawyer, not me. No, I'm afraid he couldn't. Oh, you tell him why, Sam. Ben Sawyer's up for the same job. I thought you knew. My money's on you, Sam. Let's get together soon. It's been too long. All right. Take it easy. Officer Murray, I'd like you to meet Miss Darcy. She's a last-minute replacement for Simpson. Oh, it's a real pleasure. And uh, I'm Jack Sanders. Yeah, he's the one I warned you about. <laughs> hey, how about that, huh? Hello, Captain. Hi, Art. I, I was wondering if... Uh... Oh, hi. Uh -huh. She's busy now. Uh -huh. Well, when she gets on busy, have her bring me a cup of coffee. Checklist? Yeah, shoot. Gear lever and lights. Down and checked. Parking brake. On. I think you'll be comfortable here, Mr. Richards. May I take your hat and coat? What? Your hat and coat. I'll take care of it for you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thanks. Oh, well, uh, if you need anything, you just signal me right there, all right? Gonna meet you at Seattle. Kids, mommy. Bye. We'll take good care of her. Light uh, instruments? Uh, checked. Hey, hey, Art. They tell me there's a stream up around Walla Walla that is loaded with trout. You ever hear about that? I'm ready. One is clear. Was clear. Consolidated 22, over. Consolidated 22. Consolidated 22, cleared to runway 25 left. Wind 280 degrees at 7. Altimeter 3018. Time 08 and a half, over. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Captain Savage and the crew, I'd like to welcome you aboard Consolidated Flight 22. Our flying time to Seattle will be 2 hours and 10 minutes at an altitude of 29,000 feet. Wow. 
I'm on a heading of 270 degrees. Acknowledge. Over. The 270. Roger. Consolidated 22. Better power. On and check. Huh? She's still busy. Los Angeles Tower. Consolidated 22. We're ready for takeoff. Consolidated 22. Cleared for takeoff. Over. Consolidated 22. Roger. Still busy. Anyway, she only likes young men. Thanks, pal. For the coffee, now sit down and fasten your seatbelt. Roger, Pops. Get that overhead light, Joe. Up, you are in radar contact, Consolidated 22. Proceed on heading. Consolidated 22, Roger. Rudder auxiliary pump. Off and checked. Masterful. I'll go back and tell Darcy how great you are. Maybe it'll help. I'll speak for myself, you don't mind. Right engine's on fire. Chop everything to it. Pull a fire bottle. The engine feels okay, so we're in good enough shape. Yeah, I'll go back and see to the passengers, Jack. Huh? Good girl. Los Angeles Approach Control, this is Consolidated 22. Consolidated 22, this is Los Angeles Approach Control, over. Our right engine just blew fire warning light and bell. Cut up the damn bell. Stand by 22. All right, let's get him back in. You'll have to wait. The plane's here. 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 Not three at once. We have 22 holes while we get them out of there. Radar control, the consolidated 22. 22, Roger. You're cleared for immediate descent to 3,000 and maintain heading 350. Do not assume any easterly heading. Three inbound planes in your area. 22, Roger. Uh, all right. All right, go take a look from the cabin. And walk, don't run. Tell them we're going back. Nothing to be worried about. Ladies and gentlemen, we're sorry to inform you that due to mechanical difficulties, we will have to return to the Los Angeles airport. Please keep your seatbelts fastened. Thank you. That whole right engine's cockeyed on the mounts. Bent to about 30 degrees. She really blew. It's really spilled my coffee, too. Want another cup? <laughs> no, I'll wait till we get it. Consolidated 22, this is Los Angeles Approach Control. Over. 22, Roger. Give you approach clearance now, 22. You're a good boy. Make right turn to a heading of... What happened to him? Radar control from 22, over. Went dead. Other engine. Radar control. Chop it, chop it up. Martha, get them ready for a crash landing. It's gone. He's dropped too low for the radar. Oh, you beautiful beach.
it's all right. They're from Consolidated Airlines. This is Mr. Stillman, Vice President in charge of transportation. On all points when it touched down. Yeah. He might have made it if that deer hadn't been there. We're holding up the passenger list. At least it's not a total. Survivors from that? Yeah, three of them over there. They were thrown clear. One of those unaccountable things. One of them was our stewardess, a girl named Martha Webster, the other two are passengers. Too soon to tell. She's a pretty heavy shop. See that she's given everything necessary. This was Consolidated Airlines flight number 22. There were 54 people aboard, 49 passengers and five crew members. The accident occurred only five minutes after the takeoff. The plane was airborne, but it crashed only 10 miles from the airport. Mr. Proctor of the Civil Aeronautics Board. We're taking over the investigation. What about a place to put this plane back together? We'll make room for you. We'll answer all your questions. Just take it easy. Right. Everybody take your time, sir. All right, here they come. Excuse me, Mr. McBain. We'd appreciate something from you, sir. You? Mr. Wilson here is our public relations man. He can speak for us. Well, I know, but since you're in charge of... This pilots, is all sort of your bailiwick, isn't it? A thing like this. Mr. McBain handles flight operations. Mr. Sawyer is director of engineering and maintenance. It's the bailiwick of all of us. Excuse me. Anything further to add, Mr. McBain? All I can say is uh, apparently it was a failure of the right engine soon after takeoff. That's all we know. And you think yes, that's, well, I said that's all we know for No, now. not quite. We also know that uh, that was not the direct cause of the crash. And after the apparent failure, the left engine was known to be functioning perfectly and supporting the plane. Then how do you explain this when not only 10 miles from here was the world's biggest airport where everything had been cleared for your pilot. And he acknowledged approach clearance. Uh, that ceiling and visibility were unlimited. But wouldn't this indicate some kind of pilot error? Captain Savage was a veteran pilot and he was a very fine one. Yeah, but isn't it possible that he might have been... That doesn't no, matter. it is not possible. Explain the whole situation. Mr. McBain. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 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 Wait just a minute. All we can tell you right now, it's a complete mystery. We're doing everything we can to solve it. We have the flight recorder. That's one thing right there. Would you explain exactly what a flight recorder is? Well, that's an instrument the plane records how she's flying. Anything goes wrong mechanically, it'll show up on the graphs. from outside. Sabotage? Why not? It's happened before. Okay, keep us posted. Seems one of the passengers took out a special three-day air flight insurance policy, as much as he could get, and then hit two of the machines in the terminal for their maximum. Total of about 400 grand. I want that plane checked for explosion marks. Every Considering inch... Considering that this is a CA... Every inch of metal, wire, and fabric. And under my direction, that will be done automatically. Excuse me, gentlemen. Keep this under your hats for now. It's about two of your survivors, the passengers. Yes? Just got the word. They never even made it to the hospital. Wilson! Uh, may I have a statement from you, sir? No, Con. More tough luck. Look, Mr. Uh, what is it, Crawford? I don't believe in luck. Whether it's, it's tough or it's 
It's good. No, it then evidently you didn't hear about that pier. What are you talking about? All normal things being equal, it wouldn't have been there to wreck your place. A contractor was set to tear it down a week ago. Last minute, he decided to go hunting. It was good, so he stayed an extra two days. He was scheduled to start in the morning. If you don't call that luck. Now, wait a minute. That crash was caused by something that had nothing, nothing to do with luck. Now, uh, some... I don't know, somebody tampered, somebody goofed. Then why not the pilot? There are more people involved in a flight than the pilot. Well, didn't you know that? Pick your mind. All right, suppose we start. Uh, anywhere, just tell me anything that comes to your mind. Yes, I remember ringing the alarm bell. Trouble with the engine. We were just airborne, and uh, I was with them in the cockpit. And then I went back to the passengers. And then the, the, the plane smoothed out. Is that right? Yes. It must have been something else. Something uh, else. Don't disturb her anymore. No, 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 it's all right. I... I think I opened the door, but I, I, I get to that point and I can't remember. I, the cockpit. I looked in and the alarm bell was ringing. The red lights were on, both lights. And then I... Wait a minute, both lights? Are you sure? I closed the door and I went back. Both lights. <laughs> and there they were. Now, that, please, they that will be all. Dorothy just standing there. That's what I don't understand. It was her first flight with us. Why, Darcy, why not me? Out of all those people, why me? Please tell me. Why me? Why me? Seagull feathers? Yes. More specifically, the feathers of a gull known as Pacific Kittiwake. Extremely rare visitors at this season of the year. Practically never on the landward side. Strictly an offshore bird. Yet there he was, on your landing strip, waiting to be sucked into the jet chamber to choke it. Very strange for any gulls to have done that. But these particular gulls, well, that's something I'll leave to the philosophers. It has nothing to do with science. Hey, wait a minute. This is the right engine. We already know that can't be blamed for the crack up. Neither can the other one. Well, wait until you look at it. We have. Come on, Sawyer. There's your left engine. Not a scratch, Sam. Not a dent. No blast or explosion marks? Nothing. Well, that's impossible. I just left the stewardess, and that engine was on fire alarm. She heard it. She saw the light flashing. Fire it up. girl just made a mistake. You sure you didn't coach her? Unintentionally. I mean, she must be pretty hazy about things, wouldn't she be? No, she came up with it herself. Or at least I thought so. He gave you the report about the flight recorder? What? That was wrecked beyond any possible use. Not that there isn't a little progress elsewhere. There's some action on that sabotage angle. What? Well, it seems that the guy with a half million dollars worth of insurance was a down at the heels artist living in a third-rate apartment in Hollywood, behind in his rent. According to his landlord, he'd never flown before in his life. Eccentric. But he was handy with tools. Could make anything. There. This one. Mr. Sawyer. Mr. Sawyer. 
Radar control is ready with the tapes. Let's go. Mr. Proctor. Yeah? Uh, Mr. McBain. I'm glad I caught you, fellas. Two minutes ago, my office gave me an item on your pilot. What about him? About his drinking. What do you mean? A fella just phoned one of the papers, said he'd seen Savage in a bar only a couple of hours before flight time. That's a lie. Are you sure? What do you mean, am I sure? Of course I'm sure. I saw Savage myself not, not ten minutes before flight time. Some guys can handle it better than others, you know that. This was one of those spots on the strip. Guys of our tender there said he recognized Savage's picture in the paper. No pilot of mine breaks the 24-hour rule. Now, you got yourself a crank now. Just forget it. Well, I can't. He was seen an hour earlier at another joint and with the same pal. The pal could hardly walk. You use that on your newscast and you'll get sued right out of business. Nobody's calling it fact yet, Mr. McBain. They're not that stupid. I gave it to you now, such as it is, because I thought it might be helpful. Thanks. We appreciate that, Crawford. Mr. Proctor. Please call your district office. I'll meet you at the tower. Oh, it's just an unconfirmed report. I wouldn't give it a second thought. Except for the fact Except that... for what? Well, <laughs> don't forget, Sam, I was around here, too, when Savage first showed up. What was it, uh, 16 years ago, was it? Want to be pilot class students? <laughs> Some student. Fresh out of stunt flying for an aerial circus. After five solid years with the Air Transport Command, don't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? Remember the time when he cracked up our only training plane? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> he was still singing Blue Moon when we hauled him out. Boy, oh boy. What a guy. It's good to reminisce about good old Jack Savage, isn't it? What? Especially when you can color him up just the way you want to. Maybe I got the idea from you. You're pulling engines out of your hat to throw at me every chance you've had. Well, I'm going to throw them right back at you, Sam. I want that vice presidency, too. All right. But you're going to have to nail a dead pilot to the mast to get it, because he's going to have to be proven guilty. I suppose we get over there and hear what he has to say. Los Angeles Approach Control. This is Consolidated 22. Over. Consolidated 22, this is Los Angeles Approach Control, over. Our right engine just blew, fire warning line and bell. Well, cut off the damn bell. Stand by, 22. Right, how did he sound? What? How did he sound? In some trouble, but not panicked, if that's what you mean. Well, he didn't sound like he'd been drinking. All right, let's get him back in. He'll have to wait. Plane's here, here, here. Not three at once. Have 22 hold while we get them out of there. Radar control to consolidated 22. 22, Roger. You're cleared for immediate descent to 3,000 and maintain heading 350. Do not assume any easterly heading. Three inbound planes in your area. 22, Roger. I hear that absolutely steady. Thing like that, how could you tell one way or another? What's this about this drinking? I can tell you, Mr. Stillman, absolutely nothing. Now, a funny thing, that last. Out of some 20 planes arriving during that hour, each of those three, each one was off his individual schedule at that particular instant. Otherwise, we could have cleared Savage with no delay at all. All right, 22. We can give you approach clearance now. <laughs> You're a good boy. Here was the other oddball thing. Their radio went dead. Will you acknowledge, 22? This is Los Angeles Approach Control. Over. We never heard another word. That's when whatever happened to that plane happened. And, of course, they weren't able to tell us about it, yes? Yes, he is. For you, Mr. Proctor. Oh, thanks. Yes, Proctor here. That's it. That's all there is. But how about that? Any idea on the odds of a radio going out? That had nothing to do with bringing that plane down. Well, that wasn't my point. I'm only saying that right in front of that situation, we had those three jets in there. And that wouldn't happen in another dozen years, either. But that isn't what caused the crash, and that's what we're interested in. What did? Something material, something you can put your finger on. Thank you. We'll be right there. There was the FBI. Another sabotage? That's more dope for us. 
along with the guy's suitcase that just fished out of the water. Well, that's it, gentlemen. So much for your saboteur. Forget him. Oh, wait a minute. What about all that insurance? That's not normal. Oh, for him it was. There was another guy going with Richards. Last minute, he had a premonition. He was your one cancellation. Richard got scared and hit the machines to their maximum with his sister as beneficiary. Yeah, she lives in Seattle. She was getting married. That's probably why he packed away this moth-eaten tuxedo. He meant to get there all right in one piece. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. McBain. Mr. Hutchins and Mr. Wilson are here. We'll keep in touch. I want to get this in my report. Oh, yes, there's a CAB hearing tomorrow. Tomorrow? 10 o'clock. I know it's jumping the gun, but public pressure's building up. And this won't relieve it much. The rumor first circulated earlier this morning of a violation of regulations by the pilot, drinking in a bar two hours before flight time. Jack Savage. Legally speaking, if there's anything in that story at all, we're up the creek. Every relative of every victim will probably be lining up his case right now. That hearing will be packed with their lawyers, all ears and teeth bared. That's the usual procedure, isn't it? Blame the pilot, especially when he's dead, then he can't defend himself. Let's face it, Sam, Jack wasn't the so-called ideal image to begin with. Oh, no. What do you mean by that? Well, a bachelor like that? Yeah. The public likes to think of these guys as family men. You know, houses, mortgages, kids, and so on. Well, it just so happens that I am a bachelor, too. You are not a line pilot. And during the last year, you didn't bounce from an heiress to a stripper to I don't know what else. The last one was a Chinese girl. Just a minute, where did you, where did you dig all that up? You know how many stories have reached me about that man just since last night? Playboy, show off, unstable. If I've heard them, most lawyers have heard them. And if we can't knock them down, we've got to level. Just admit that somehow he slipped past. Just him. wait. That particular just pilot. Wait a minute, will you? No pilot just slips past. Him or anybody else. Now just you wait a minute. How can you be so sure? About him, it's easy. During the war, I was his co pilot. Yes, but how close have you been since, in recent years? Look, Ben, come on now. In recent years, I've been tied to that desk. I've been busy, you know that. All right, all right, so you can't vouch for him. So who is it you're defending? Well, just what do you mean by that? Savage or you? You for hiring him in the first place. Okay, Ben. All right, suppose you just come right out and tell these people what you really mean, huh? Come on, we're all here. Let's just bring it right out in the open. Instructor failure, mine, huh? Yeah, I'm the one responsible for this. Isn't that what you're trying to say? Sam, that's enough. Listen to me, both yeah. of you. I don't give one damn who was or is slated to move up around here or move out either. All I care about is what's best for this company. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm satisfied the only move we can make with any face at all is to dump the pilot, sell him out and take our chances. Mm -hmm. Now, how you do it, Sam, with the least stigma, that I leave to you. Just have it ready for that hearing. Teamed up on you, didn't they? I wasn't eavesdropping. I just ran out of cotton for my ears. Oh, look. Of course, something had to cause the crash. You think he's guilty, too? Oh, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I only mean that everybody's been looking for some one thing. Now, maybe it's a combination. A lot of small things. Bad breaks, coincidences. Well, why not? Now, those feathers, for instance. Yeah, for instance, that pier, which is also for the birds. For guys who are looking for an alibi because they don't know where to look. Or they don't want to. So you're going to look. And maybe come up with a kind of answer that won't do that promotion one bit of good. What then? Peg, 53 people were killed in that crash. 53! Now, that's our responsibility. Oh, you think I'm going to... Duck that responsibility for the sake of a, a vice presidency? Vice president of what? Just forget it. Yeah, I forget this job, too. If I'm going to lose it because of Jack Savage, boy, I want to know I got it coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you have? Hey, uh, I understand you're the fellow that identified the pilot of that plane. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm the one. You said he was in this bar last night. Yeah. And you actually saw him take a drink. Oh, well, yeah, I saved him. I mean, but I didn't stand over and watch him. I mean, we were jumping, mister. Uh, say, the, uh, I understand you recognize him from this picture here. Yeah, yeah. Well, how come your story said that he was in civilian clothes when he came in? Here he's, he's in a uniform, isn't he? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, he, he was wearing a, he was wearing a check jacket. But he could have walked in here with a toga. That's the guy, that's him. How about another scotch and soda, huh? Hey, sure. You can pour me one, too, Yeah. Yeah. You keep the change. Well, uh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, you know, he was standing right over there. He was kicking and scratching, having a wonderful time. There was this gorgeous tomato jammed up against him. I mean, just having fun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a boyfriend comes in. I think I thought his nose was going to go out of joint for a minute. I thought we were going to wind up in a rhubarb. <laughs> oh, yeah, and also his uh, friend, the guy that Savage came in with, he was really low. <laughs> Kept calling the Savage uh, Jack. I mean, so you can see why it was so easy for me to spot him, you know. <laughs> Bernie, let's have a straight bourbon, huh? Yeah. And, and crack that up for me. Sure, baby. You, uh, say his friend called him Jack. What did he call his friend? Well, uh, tell you the truth, I never heard. Uh, but, uh, I recognize the guy. I mean, he, he was about, uh, Savage's age. Uh, I remember he come in one morning about 11 o'clock. Schlock. He was really thank. <laughs> his name was Mickey. Mickey what? Well, who knows? Uh, I only knew that much because he said he was going to go to another pub. And this other guy said, no, Mickey, uh, let's hear the tune first. So he gives me a buck to get to the combo. You know what the tune was? Blue Moon. <laughs> Blue Moon? How about that? I just thank goodness you're not one of those reporters. Look what they did to my flowers. Stomped on them like buffalo. Asked me if I knew anybody named Mickey. I think two of them were really private detectives, you know, for lawyers. They're pretty sneaky. Miss Mickey, do you know him? Oh, no, of course not, Mr. McBain. I never, never concern myself with the private lives of any of my tenants or their friends. They told me I ought not to touch things for a while. Yeah, I know. It looks like things are just thrown. He must have been in a frightful hurry last night, changing into his uniform. That's a nice one, isn't it? You like that sort of thing? I just never cared for Czech. They're too showy. First, now for him, might be all right. Oh yes, how he loved that concert, yeah. <laughs> Whether the neighbors did or not, how they did complain. Parties, dozens of people, him singing and squeezing that thing till all hours. Oh, I guess I shouldn't repeat that. No, no, it's all right. Well, it isn't as though I mind it, Mr. McBain. You see, I keep strictly to myself. Live and let live, that's my motto. Oh, yeah, that was another one of his pranks. Well, do I remember the night he brought that home, laughing and stumbling all the way across the court like some wild... Oh, there I go again. I just happened to be standing by my window when they came along, Captain Savage and this, well, one of his lady friends he'd picked up, Lord knows where. I just wonder how much longer they expect me to look after these things. It isn't as though I had nothing else to do. Hmm. See what I mean? Now, it's a tenant again. If it isn't one, it's another. But never one quite as trying as Captain Jack Savage. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't help it if I was brought up with certain moral standards. Now that, a lady's garter, if you please, right out for everybody to see why it's downright indecent. I won't be but a moment, Mr. McBain. Love. 
do nothing until my baby comes home. No, sir. Do nothing as long as baby must roam. I promised him I'd wait for him. Till even the head is frozen, I'm lonesome, heaven knows. But what I said still goes. No love, no nothing, and that's the promise I'll keep. No fun with no one. I'm getting plenty of sleep. My heart's on strike, and though it's like an empty honeycomb, no love, no sir. No nuts until my baby comes home. No love. No, sir. No nothing till my baby comes. She knows you're still the throw to two, huh? Oh, now, come on, Sam. She picks out one square at every base. It's good for morale. <laughs> <laughs> Except yours, buddy. Excuse me. No love, no nothing. Until my baby comes home. No, sir, no nothing. As long as my baby must roam. I promise her I'd wait for her. Oh, I would wait for her. Don't take it so hard there, old pal. Uh, morning for you, Sam. What? Your date's off. It's all right, she knows about it. The CEO called her. Oh, come on, knock it off, will you? No, no, no really. Yeah, sure, sure. They're sending us out with a cargo of heavy machinery tomorrow morning, early. Briefings tonight. You gotta take over. Why me? Well, they've nailed me for one of those strategy huddles over at base headquarters. You know how long that'll last. <sighs> Tough luck, Sam. on his way to a briefing. is your dear major. I'm terribly sorry, Captain. I do hope I've made up for it a little, though. He told me you'd lost the other one. The other one? Uh, bye! And we'll be back tonight! Great girl, Sam. Well, now I got the complete set, huh? briefing last night, especially when we found out the whole mission was your idea. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I get these brain thoughts once in a while, you know. 
Uh, it can be terribly tiring. Well, you're in great shape for a fine flight. Well, I don't intend to. You're going to be doing most of the flying. Hey, Ralph. Yes, sir. Uh, wake me up when we get over that Jap ammo dump, will you? Yes, sir. situation, if you ask me. You know, you guys start feeling secure. You, you get bored and dissatisfied. Start complaining. Oh, me? I'm one of those kind of nuts who likes to feel safe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why is that, Sam? What do you mean, why is that? Because I got post-war plans, that's why. Yeah. Flying? That's right, flying. Not this kind of flying, that's for sure. We're all commercial, huh? Sane and commercial. <laughs> and all laid out, huh? Punch the clock on time, be nice to the passengers, then all the way up the ladder to the top. The big boy with his finger on the number. What's wrong with that? What happens if your number comes up, Sam, and it's a cancellation? I don't figure it that way. Didn't figure you did. You know, I'm all for flying, wouldn't be without it. You show me the lifetime guarantee on anything. You know, the best thing you can do as far Sir, as I can see is to major? get the most out of every single day and be ready to pick up your marbles when they call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, Ralph? Uh, uh, that uh, Jap base you wanted to know about? Yeah. Uh, Scotty thinks we're over it right now. Right. We on that frequency? Yes, sir. Hand me that mic. Now, what's this all about? Well, we can't shoot at him. At least we can let him know we're still in business. Oh, great. <coughs> Steady there, baby. Blue moon, you saw me standing alone without a dream in my heart, without a love of my own. Blue moon. You I hate to interrupt your what? concert, but I got news for you. This plane is carrying more weight than it can hold up. Well, so let's get down and flow out, huh? Blue moon, you knew just great. what I was there for. I hit that you mountain know. there, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're on full throttle, and we're still losing altitude. Does that mean we're going to bail out? Oh, now, let's not be rash about this, Ralph. Boy. Okay, Sam. What you do, Ralph? Call Chapwa. Got that? Yes, sir. Tell him to get a bearing on us and stand by for a mayday. Yes, sir. Then, then we are going to jump. That's right. After that, when you call Chapwa, button down that key and get rid of the classified material. You hear? Yes, sir. Get him out of there, Sam. Go on. I'll be behind you when I finish up here. Come on, and that's an order, now. 
Welcome, welcome. I tell you, that was great news, hearing that you'd been spotted. We're mighty happy, and I know you are, too. Yeah, well, we could be a lot happier. Bundy and Savage. What about Bundy and Savage? Sam, it's ours. It's ours. Colonel, that plane was one minute away from a crash. What happened? Probably the finest flying that you'll ever run across. He just wouldn't give in. Wouldn't abandon a ship like so many other. I uh, think you know what a ship like that means to us in times like these. <laughs> Giving him his own command, you know, in Greenland. If any man ever deserved it. How does it make you feel? Kind of heroic? Of course, I'd be the last guy in the world to say he planned it that way. Boy, if you ain't one hell of a looking crew. Oh, God, you feel? Hey, Scotty. Okay, pal? Just great. All right. I'll come out to the hospital and see you. Well, Sam. <laughs> Good old Sam. Oh, now, come on, pal. I just had to bring that wagon in. Very valuable cargo aboard. Just a minute, Sam. Here it is, Sam. Jane says welcome home, too. I'm sorry I was so long, Mr. McBain. Oh, no, it's, it's all right. I was just about to leave. She's lovely, isn't she? You recognize her, of course. No, I can't say that I do. That's his fiance, Lisa Bond, a Pasadena heiress, one of the oldest families in Southern California. How he snared her is a mystery to me. She wouldn't even see the newspaper men this morning. They told me. That's why I did all I could to help them about Captain Savage. I wait, felt so wait sorry. You say she uh, lives in what was it, Pasadena? You have her address? Oh, Mr. McBain, you wouldn't visit her now in her hour of grief? Oh, dear me, no. A lady like that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh, you look lovely. How was your Oh, Tom and Eloise have been asking for you. Eloise! Listen, have a drink. I'll be right back. I have a nasty bar. Not See what you, you think. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. You know how these hassles are. You understand, Mr. McBain? This was already scheduled, and there simply wasn't time to stop it. I really couldn't, no matter how I may have felt inside. How did you feel, Miss Bond? I mean, inside. Terrible. You did. Well, now, where were we? Where were we? We were talking about a man by the name of Mickey, who was supposed to have been a friend of your late lamented fiance. I thought you might have met him. Hello there, Sarah. Tom. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you? Do you mind? Could we go someplace, uh, excuse me, and talk? We're away from all this. Oh, Mickey. Nope, I don't recall anybody by that name. But actually, I've met almost none of Jack's friends. Uh, it uh, actually didn't last very long, the engagement. <laughs> well, I don't know how it even started. You don't know how it started? In the ladies' room, where else? <laughs> it was up in San Francisco at the airport, between planes. I don't know, the door jammed, and there I was. Damsel in distress, yelling for help at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and you know what happened? He talked me into staying over. And then he got a buddy of his to uh, fly his schedule so he could stay over, too. <laughs> now, that's what I call a real salesman. <laughs> well, Lisa, uh, if you're not going to dance with your friend, uh, uh, how about letting me have a chance? Eh? But I just was going to do the same thing, Doc. Look, I'm kind of running out of time. And besides, I seem to be just playing straight man to some of your very uh, delightful recollections. Some other party, perhaps. Excuse me. You're really quite a smug sort of fellow, aren't you? You want a little privacy. It's obviously a little hard to come by. The dance would have helped. Would have also helped to dispel some of those impressions you're so bent on carrying. 
I guess I did come on kind of strong. I'm sorry. But after that San Francisco episode, I found myself organizing a big party, a big weekend at my Santa Barbara ranch. I wanted all my friends to meet him. And the grand finale was to be the formal announcement of our engagement. You know what he did? He wandered off that day and showed up two hours late. We found him in the kitchen wearing hip boots and cleaning a sink full of fish. Well, that must have made quite a hit with everybody. Oh, believe me, never was a disaster more welcome. Of course, I was able to break off the engagement then and there, without a qualm. <laughs> Say, listen, do you have a phone around here I could use by any chance? Oh, right over here. I must say he made a show of it, getting over it, I mean. A friend of mine said that she saw him coming out of one of those Hollywood nightclubs not more than a week later. She said the girl with him was Chinese. A dancer, I suppose, something like that. <laughs> Lisa, how about a dance? Oh, I'm available. Oh, one more thing, Miss Bond. What did you think of uh, Jack Savage? Not as a fiance, but as a man. Hmm? Oh, this is McBain. May I have my office, please? And what if they were to put you on the stand as a character witness? And what would you say? And oh. Yes, under oath. Call it Peg, will you? Well, then, in that case, he was the most unreliable, irresponsible, and unregenerate man I ever met. <laughs> Come on, Robbie, let's dance. Peg. How does it look so far? I tell you, we're cooked. They got everything on Jack except Mickey, and they probably got him on. Not so far, not that I know. And anyway, you can forget him for now. You've heard about Jack's Chinese girl. <laughs> yes, among others. Well, she evidently lasted no longer than they did, so you can forget her, too. I've got a new one for you. Break it to me gently. Well, the report on Jack's insurance came in. A week ago, he named a new beneficiary. Sally Fraser, 26, unmarried. Ever hear of her? I got it, Peg. Have fun. It's lucky you called first. She was just getting ready to leave. Well, I won't keep her long. The gentleman is here, Miss Fraser. Thank you. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. McBain. Well, it's nice of you to see me. Miss Frazier? It was the name, wasn't it? It happens often. You see, an English family adopted me. I was war orphan in China, where you once were at the same time. How'd you know that? Jack told me. So, of course, I recognized your name. He was very fond of you. He said you were a fine man. But that time as a refugee, Mr. McBain, I treasure it. Else there would have been no phrases. Without them, I wouldn't have had my work. And without my work, today, There she is. Come see. Sophophorus maculutus, in case you've never met. She's a lot smaller than her name, isn't she? She may call her Moonfish, she'd be rather. Foolish Moonfish. When I return her to her neighbors, she'll try to hide for hours. 
as I've been doing. Tomorrow, though, I'll be able to go to his apartment. To pick up the aquarium. That was just a guess. I, I saw it there. <laughs> you should have seen us bringing it. Yeah, I got the picture from the manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was quite impressed. Yes, peering from a window like a sentinel. So baffled. It took us hours to set it up, but it was fun. And he pretended to be so interested. That was to please me. Not that it began that way. It was in quite a different setting. Santa Barbara, in fact. But those wonderful hills nearby. Very pretty. Very gentle. Perfect for an afternoon's ride. I was spending a weekend at one of the guest ranches nearby. Yeah! No! What? Throw him back! What are you out of your mind? He's a beauty. That's why. Let him go. Let him go. What are you go. talking about? Let go. Look at the size of it. You in after him. Go ahead if you want. Ow! Fish are to admire and study. What? They are God's most graceful creatures. You don't say. Who who are you anyway? For one thing, an oceanographer. Oh. And what for another? An ichthyologist. I was pretty silly to ask, wasn't I? All that in that tiny little package? Forget it. Nobody would ever believe it. <laughs> they don't always. Well, in any case, please try to forgive me for what happened. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What do you mean you're sorry? You think you can just pop out of nowhere and wreck everything and then say you're sorry and skedaddle? You can't get away as easily as that. What would you have me do? Well, uh, for one thing, you can uh, see how many more crazy things you can tell me about yourself. And let's see how many more I'll try and believe. Naturally, after a while, he told me about himself. His fiancée and her friends, all alerted for the announcement that was to be made that night at dinner. <laughs> no, 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 let's not rush things. You know, what we should do is look for uh, the longest trail back. I don't understand. You want to be late for the announcement? I want to stop it altogether. What kind of a person are you? Another fish getting off a hook. You approve of that, don't you? If you didn't want to get married, why didn't you tell us so? I didn't really have anything to say about it. First time I knew I was engaged was when I read it in the papers. <laughs> but I think it's all settled. I've been working on this flight plan for quite some time now. I think it's cruel. No, not cruel. It's crude. <laughs> the minute I barge into the kitchen with these, it'll all be over. Her friends will celebrate her return to sanity, and her fans will cheer her escape. Sally? Don't look so worried. It's as right as rain for her, too. Come on. It's 
He wanted her to be able to tell him just the way it would most please her. He had to be certain she wouldn't be hurt. That was the Jack I knew. It's too bad it's not the Jack I knew. Because the Jack that I knew is the one I'm going to have to defend at that hearing tomorrow. With a saturated pal named Mickey. Mickey? Did you know him? No, I don't remember his ever mentioning that name. And all this business about him leaving everything he had to a, a woman he'd known for less than a month. Yes, I was surprised too when the insurance people informed me. He had told them I might like it for my work. And that's what it will be for, Mr. McBain, in case you're as curious as his prosecutors. That's fair enough. After all, I'm curious about you. About me? Why? You're even bothering about those things. Spending such time, such effort. And still not knowing what caused that crash. I suppose you do know, huh? Of course. It was fate. Well, now, I thought it was about time for that to come up. Then it has occurred to you. Only as a refuge, Miss Fraser. Because, like it or not, I deal in vital statistics. <laughs> you are the way Jack described you. He said you were one of the best built machines he ever knew. Never end up. Gobbled up facts and figures and wrote out the shiniest answers. Even when they were wrong. Well, he may not have liked them, but he knew they were real. They weren't mysticism. Mysticism isn't such a bad word. To some, it's the same as religion. Just as to some, faith should be spelled God. Either way, there must be faith attached. The acceptance of a divine operation, a plan. Fifty-three people were destroyed. Now, if you can see the divinity As map. I said, there must be faith. Suppose you use that instead of logic. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. But once you can, so many things will fall into place. It may even occur to you then that perhaps fate has been moving you too. Every step you've been taking. I admit I'm an older hand at this than you. Oh, you could have been born yesterday and be that. I can tell you that there have been moments these past hours when I felt that the whole overall plan, whatever it is, is still somehow moving on towards some purpose, some revelation. I mentioned this to Ralph Bundy only this morning. I'm not sure he believed me Wait either. Wait a minute. Did you say Bundy? Ralph Bundy? You remember him. Jack said he was part of your crew during the war. Yes, he was our radio operator. Yes. He and Jack were close friends. Do you know where I can find him? He might know this, Mickey. Would you like me to take you there? I'd like that very much. <laughs> That's the plan again, you see. It happens to be on my way home. Right. Be right with you. Sally. I brought you no comrade. Hello, Ralph. Well, for Captain. Excuse me, that, that got to be Major, didn't it? Well, it was Sam at first, so let's use that. Huh? Well, come around here and sit down and have a cup of coffee. I'll get you a chair. No, this is fine, right here. That's quite a place you have here. No complaints. I've been pretty lucky, I guess. I'm just sorry that it was something like this, what happened to Jack, that brought you by. Yeah, I'm sorry, too, but... 
Funny, uh, ever since it happened, I haven't been able to look around here, look at my family, look at me even, without knowing that I wouldn't even be here to look at anything if it hadn't been for him. You mean for him, for Jack Savage? You were part of that time. You remember that bailout? Sure, I remember it, especially when he brought the plane back anyway. I couldn't very well forget it. <laughs> and you blasted him for grandstanding because you never knew what happened. Well, what, what did happen? I mean, what really happened up in that plane? Right after Jack told you not to wait for me and finally he had to order you out? I remember how scared I was. I guess that's what caused it. I was fumbling around with the gear and finally went back to make the jump. trap shut about what happened up here, right? What do you say? It's fine by me, sir. You got a deal. Bull moon. Now I'm no longer alone without a dream in my heart, without a love of my own. <laughs> no, he didn't fool me for a minute. He just wanted to set it up that way for me. I owe him a lot. I want to think I would have spilled the truth anyway, but of course, uh, we were transferred to Greenland, and I guess you could say we've been together ever since. He, he always kept in touch. He was never too busy. Whenever I needed him, he was always there. And he was the same to all the other fellows of the old crew. Bud Grant, Mickey Doolin, Dave Scott. Wait a minute. Wait. 
Did you say Mickey? Yeah, Mickey Doolin. Oh, you don't remember him. He was part of the Greenland deal. He was co-pilot. Haven't you been reading the papers? I haven't wanted to read a line about this thing. They've been raking this whole town looking for somebody by the name of Mickey. He probably hasn't read the papers either. Well, the story is he was making rounds of the bars with Jack that night. Now, where does he live? You tell me. Place to place. Where does anybody like that live? No, no, I mean his hangouts, his friends. His... Same thing. I just don't have any idea, Sam. Sorry. Should have broken it up in smaller pieces instead of putting it back together again. You're Mickey Doolin. Yeah, that's right. I've been waiting for you. I had an idea you wanted to see me. Not that you haven't had that pleasure before. You, I hit you up for a job once. No, I'm sorry it uh, didn't work out. Don't be sorry. You're probably right in turning me down. Mind you, I said probably. He didn't do it, you know. Proving it was something else. Well, if he did, I can tell you this, he left something else behind. What do you mean by that? I haven't the slightest idea. Just going by something that Jack said once. Over Greenland. It's a great place for little talks. You ever see Greenland? Greenland from the air? From an altitude of 4,000 feet thereabouts? Then 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. The way you would if you were lost. Couldn't find the field, couldn't even raise it on the short wave. And you're nosing down through the clouds, so maybe you can get low enough so you can see it with your eye. We didn't know how high we were above anything till we saw it land or sea. Naturally, this is a matter of grave concern to our leader. Well, the moon, you know just what I was there for, yeah. Saying a prayer for... Give me a light, Ralph. Yes, sir. Some things you just never get used to, boss. Yeah, like plowing into the ocean. I've got a feeling we've gone as low as we ought to go. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Mick. Yeah. Okay, thanks, old chap. Ralph, sit down and fasten your belt. Four's out, feather it. Four's feathered. Fields at the end of this view, I think. You mind telling me how you know that? I don't know, it's gotta be, we're out of gas. Oh, I see. Number one's out, feather that. field can't not be there, because we never have another chance to look for it. Of course. No, really, we'd have bought it. Timing's not right for a deal like that. Actually, well, I know the timing's not right, because it'll be such a damn waste to everybody. 
You know, I wouldn't have left anything. I wouldn't have given anything. Either would you, probably. Understand? Oh, sure, I understand. Blue moon. That it? That was it. As far as that cockeyed philosophy was concerned, honey. I never got a word of it. I never forgot it either. Who knows, maybe he did leave something after all. Well, I can tell you one thing I wish he hadn't left. That was the saloon tour he made with you. The tour, true. The drinking? <laughs> He's about to chloroform him first. He ordered a drink. He ordered a dozen of them, but they were all for me. Not that he used to do it. Matter of fact, he spent five years trying to buck me into AA. Until I finally convinced him he was wasting his time. And mine too. After that, nothing but the fest. He, he used to say it offended his delicate sensibilities, my, my taste for rot cut whiskey. And two bit wine. Mickey? Oh, come on, none of that. Not until I know you better. Now, this is for services, plus taxi fare here, for a CAB hearing in the morning. What do you want me for? I want you to tell him what you told me. Do you think you can make it? For him, my friend, I'll zero in on that hearing like a B-25 and heavy plaque. I mean, dry. Dry as a squeezed out sponge. McBain, what I mean is, I'll, I'll sure as hell try. Ladies and gentlemen. You are witnessing the preliminary informal inquiry of the Civil Aeronautics Board into the facts surrounding the recent crash. Present, along with the investigating authorities of that board, are representatives of the airline involved, as well as spectators with special and personal interests in the tragedy. These, of course, include relatives of the victims, along with lawyers, and prominent among them, the well-known attorney, Charles J. Dillon. And now, back to the hearing. Uh, will Mr. S.C. McBain please take the stand? Now, Mr. McBain, I dare say you've conducted certain investigations of your own, quite apart from those of this board. Well, let me say, Mr. Chairman, that my search has been one of process of elimination. As you know, in the beginning, there was a strong possibility of sabotage. When that was ruled out, it left two other possibilities, either human or mechanical failure. And when the mechanical failure was ruled out, that left the one other, which was the human failure. It also left us with a scapegoat by the name of Jack Savage. As far as these charges against him as breaking rules and lapses in character, I, uh, I, I, I can assure you there are witnesses here, Mr. Chairman, who will testify under oath that these charges are absolutely false. May I ask, Mr. Chairman, will Mr. McBain himself swear under oath that his witnesses are absolutely impartial and unbiased? Mr. Dillon, you are out of order. My witnesses are very biased as any, anyone would be who knew Jack Savage for the man he really was. And they would be the first to testify that this was a man who would not deal recklessly with the lives of others. 
This was a man of great compassion with a, an abiding urge to help, not hurt. In many ways, he was the kind of man that I wish I had been. If this eulogy is quite complete, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if we could return to the case. From time to time, Mr. Dillon, I have the unmistakable impression that you're conducting this hearing. My apologies for that, sir. However, I am accompanied here by those people who have lost beloved members of their families in this tragedy. They're desirous of the facts, only the facts. Mr. McBain has demonstrated his reasoning ability by process of elimination, at least to his own satisfaction. He has removed the last possible explanation for the crash. Therefore, I must assume he has nothing further to offer. Mr. McBain? No, I have something further to offer. Because you see, Mr. Dillon, like you, I am interested in facts. I had a lifetime contempt for anything that wasn't a, a proven fact. But so many elements combined in such profusion that they just could no longer be ignored. For example, that flock of birds, that pier if it hadn't been there, the three planes, the, the, the three planes in the air at the same time, all off schedule. I'm sorry, Mr. McVeigh, I'm not following very well. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that for some inscrutable reason, which I don't understand and I, I, I don't pretend to know why, all of these things seem to combine together to cause that, that crash. So when you use up all the natural explanations, what do you have left? I mean, what, what is there but the supernatural? And what word do you use for that? Fate. What? Are you saying that this crash was a matter of luck? Is that what you're saying? Well, if you want to use that word, yes. Simply a, a bad break? No, no, I wouldn't. Use the word simple, Mr. Chairman, because simple it certainly was not. But as far as it being a bad break, who knows? Not bad. Then good, perhaps? This loss of 53 lives? Not being God, I wouldn't know if it was good or bad any more than you. Yes, but surely you must have some theory about it. Yes, I have a theory. I do. And that is that in the case of all of these victims, for some reason or other, the time had come for their lives to close. You're saying that your organization really performed a, a most saintly service in collaborating on this mass execution, and therefore ought not to be condemned but praised? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I interrupt? Mr. McBain, don't you know that if we gave any credence whatsoever to this explanation of yours that every stupid pilot error that's ever been committed could be excused on the grounds of chance. Mr. Chairman, certainly he knows this is no more than a remarkably inept attempt to obscure what was clearly pilot error. Will you be quiet? And I have every intention of proceeding on that basis. May I please have the floor? The chair recognizes Mr. Hutchins. Let the record show, sir, that Mr. McBain's testimony is entirely his own and is in no way an expression of consolidated airlines in this matter. Duly noted. May I also, at this time, request permission to withdraw until later in the week in order to prepare a more proper presentation. Under the circumstances, I see nothing to be gained by continuing today's session. Request granted.
didn't tell you the wrong things. Please try to believe that. I'm not going to ask you why, because I know why. You believed it, or you just couldn't have done it. Which hardly cuts down on the damage. Look at these. Ticket cancellations. I have to tell you. Yes? Martha Webster's on the phone. The stewardess. She's calling from the hospital. Can you take it? Oh, yes. Hello? M Mr. McBain? Yes? Well, this may sound foolish, but I... Well, I just wanted you to know that what you said at the hearing... Yes? I believed you, every word. Thank you, Martha. I appreciate that very much. Uh, uh, I'll get back to you later. I have to tell you, Sam, I got a message from the board of directors. All right, you can give them an answer. Tell them they'll have my resignation in the morning. I'm afraid they were a little more impatient than that. It's all right, they can wait at least through tonight. Well, what possible purpose? What difference does a couple of hours make? All I know is the shorter the time, the more the fun. I uh, thought we'd had about all of that kind of talk we need. What's the sense of it? What do you think you can do you haven't already done? What's left? All right. I'd like to take Jack's flight again myself. What? Yes, from the very start to the very finish. Everything that he did. Maybe we can find out what really took place. Oh, you're crazy. What is there left? You said you No, but wait a minute. Go on, Sam. All right, now listen. We'll duplicate everything. Every detail. The exact conditions. The exact time, the exact place, the exact copy. Naturally, I'll need plenty of cooperation. Not only from the ground, but in the plane. For example, we need somebody who knows the exact sequence of events that took place from the very beginning. Why, Mr. McBain? Everything that happened in that plane from the takeoff until the time it hit that pier. Everything that took place on Consolidator 22. Well, that would have to have been someone who was on 22. That's right. Oh, Mr. McBain. Look, I know what I am asking, but I am asking because I, I'm, I'm running out of time. I have no other place to turn. Here you are, Miss Webster, all cleaned and pressed, good as new. Oh, I can't. I can't do it, Mr. McBain. I'm, I'm so ashamed. No, Martha, if anybody should be ashamed, it should be me. Just put a bag in each seat except one. He'll show you which one. Now, who ever heard of shipping sand by air and in first-class seats? Flight 22 had a baggage weight of uh, 2,183 pounds and nine ounces. So weigh out the same with these and load the compartment. What about it, Al? Gonna fly co-pilot or not? Don't like it much, huh? Would you? Setting out to duplicate everything that wound up in a blue ribbon crash? That fate routine of his. I think it's nutty. How do you know he's not just asking for it to hit again? Maybe it's still operating. Maybe you could have been hit by a two-ton truck on the way over here. So, uh, what's the answer? Yes or no? Hello, Sam. Mr. Stillman? How are you, Al? Sam, my weight's 172 pounds. I just checked. Who'd you nail for engineer? Nobody. Yet. I have a candidate for you. I've got an interest in this, too, you know. If that report comes back mechanical failure, I want to be able to say it wasn't, because I was there. Okay. If you know what your weight is.
All set. Down at the last cup, saucer, plate, and bottle. I'll leave the meal count in the galley. Thanks. Now, what good they are without the stewardess? I wouldn't know. They'll keep us accurate, that's why. I've got us minus ten seconds. I'd lock us up, then. Checklist. Hold it! Hold it! Push it back! Push it back! I'll have to get on that slide! Hold it! Move it back! I better get up on that slide! Come on, move it back! Hold it! Ben! Sorry. Guess I held you up a little bit, huh? It's all right. We'll make it up. Beans. Okay, to stack these first. I right, go ahead. Gear lever and lights. Down. Check. Parking brakes. Light instruments. Check. Zero degrees at seven, which is pretty odd. Exactly the same as the other night. Over. Roger, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Captain Savage and the crew, I welcome you aboard Consolidated Flight 22. Flying time to Seattle, two hours and ten minutes at an altitude of 29,000 feet. Consolidated 24. Uh, I don't know if you wanted this detail, Mr. McBain, but, but it was now that I brought him the coffee. I want everything. Oh, well, I handed it to him. And uh, he was busy with the check, and I... Well, yes, he said it right down here. We, uh, we joked about Darcy. She was supposed to bring it, and then you... I mean, then Jack, he told me to sit down and fasten my seatbelt. You're doing fine. I kill you over. Any knots? Hi, Ralph. Mickey. Twenty degree flaps, landing gear up. You're on the radar contact 24. Savage's tape is running. I'm gonna try to track you with it second by second, okay? Roger, consolidated 24. We have you two miles west. Same pattern exactly. It must have been about now your right engine went out. Yes, yes, it was now. Cut the right engine. Now, don't trim first. Just cut it. Now I trim. You're busy chopping the line, pulling the fire bottle. Our right engine just blew fire warning light end bell. Right on the nose. Well, cut off the damn bell. It, it was... 
was now I went back to the passengers. Now, wait a minute, Martha. Hold it just a second. Come up here. Tell me, is everything exactly as it was? Exactly? Well, everything except the light and the bell, they were both on. And there was a fire in that engine. Going by the playback, Sam, we just told him to descend to 3,000 and maintain a heading of 350. We're doing it. You're over the ocean now. A while yet before his radio went dead. We'll give the word. You'll have to tell us what happened then. Stand by. All right, 22. We can give you approach clearance now. <laughs> You're a good boy. Make right turn to a heading of 090 degrees. Maintain 3,000 until advised. Now. Somewhere now. The boys here say he didn't turn back. Not till some seconds later. Any developments? Nothing. Ought to be coming up soon. It was about now that I came back up here from the passenger section. I opened the door. What was going on? The bell was ringing, and uh, Murray was trying to put out the fire. Jack was holding on to the wheel. He told me to get them ready for a crash landing. Come in, 24. What's happening? Nothing. Nothing at all. I saw it. I know I saw it. Tell him to bring the plane on back. All for nothing. Sorry, Sam. I've just been told to clear you back here. They send a... Right air control. Go on. Radar control from 24. Over. Your radio's out. That's it. The left engine. Chop it. Pull the bottle. I told you. I told you it happened this way. Come in, 24. Seatbelt. We'll have to crash land. No, we won't. We're OK. That, that right engine's all right. We cut that off ourselves. Start the right engine. Start it. She won't catch. All the way. Come on, all the way. He's dropped off the approach scope. Clear the field. Right. Let's get down there. Thanks. Flash the landing lights. We're going in. John, emergency landing, consolidated flight 24. Lined up runway 24, five miles out. Final approach. No radio. Runway 24. Correct. Try the lid off that, Ben. Well, try it off right now. Start the left engine. It's out. That engine is as good as the day it was built. Here, take it. Now, you see that coffee? It dripped through the seam onto the wire terminal, shorting out not only the radio, but the alarm system. There's nothing wrong with that engine. But Jack thought there was. And so did I. Except that he didn't have a good one to go back to. I got it. Left engine on. Aye, sir.
landing gear down. You explain to them what happened, huh, Ben? It'll be my pleasure. do about that, the seam. We reported to the FAA. They'll contact all the airlines and the plane manufacturers, and the error will be corrected. That's, that's what. So that it can never happen again, huh? So that it can never happen again. You know, I was just thinking, it was all in Jack's will. He told a friend of his that he wouldn't go unless he left something. Hey, Terrific job, man. How'd you think of it? See the car in the morning, huh? director's here. Right, let that wait till tomorrow, huh? Okay, but make it early. We got a lot to talk about. Martha, come here. I want you to meet some friends of mine. 